Hey there, welcome to today's episode. We're going to take a look at cleaning up our sample slices using start and end points. In the previous episode, I showed you the many different ways that you could slice up a sample. And what I've done here is I've sliced this one up manually. Once we've tied it up using our start and end points, we're then going to convert that sample to a drum track so we can use it inside of our project. So let's get started. I sliced this one up manually on purpose because generally it's not the most accurate way. You can usually get things into a rough ballpark kind of position where you want them. But you'll notice with something like this sample slice six, bit of a gap before the transient. So little things like that, I want to tidy up. And now's a great time to show you how to do that using your start and end points. Very similar to when we adjusted the start and end point for a whole sample. But once you have some slices, you can do that independently, which is great. What I would do, I would zoom in like this so that I've got a good accurate view. And then I would press my first pad and just run through the pads really quickly and see where the problems are because you'll notice it stays zoomed in, which is quite nice. I'm going to use the cue links. It's my preferred method, but you could just use your finger on the screen. All we need to make sure is that our cue link mode is set to the start point. If you need to tweak the endpoints, then you can. And one thing I will say is it doesn't really matter what way you slice these up and put them into your drum track. Whatever mode you choose, generally you will have access to the full sample. So if you're not 100% accurate now or you need to change something later on, you don't need to worry too much. You'll have the chance to do that inside of your track edit. And we'll look at that in another episode. But for now, I just want to tidy up a couple of samples so that it's somewhat accurate. Pad 2 has a problem. My cue links are selected. I'm going to use this second cue link down to just quickly move that in. One thing as well, if you do shift, make sure you turn on zero snapping. For new users, that's going to be handy. It jumps to the zero crossing point. It means you're less likely to get clicks and pops in your sample. The only reason really to turn it off is if you really need to fine tune right down to a very, very specific point. But for the most part, turning it on is really going to help you out. This one is OK. Here we have a problem on slice six. You can just move that one across. This one moves quicker but it's slightly less accurate. This one gets more accurate, this one more accurate still, this one more accurate still. This one's okay. Here we have a problem with this one, just gonna tidy that one up a little bit. And there we go, good enough. So it's very easy to come in and tidy up your slice points. And as I said, don't forget, you've always got options to tweak that later on inside of track edit. So in order to create that track, we need to convert. So we do shift and convert. And for beginners, just stick with the basics. Throughout this tutorial series, we'll deep dive into some of the other modes, the differences between pad parameters and non-destructive. But for now, just stick with the basics. So new drum track using slices. You will notice there are more menu options, which we'll cover at a later date and we can choose between pad parameters or non-destructive slicing. Just stick with pad parameters for now. For most part, it's going to get you by and do exactly what you need. So we just do that and we say do it. You'll notice now when we go to main page, it's given us a new track with our sample slices. The cool thing about the MPC is that it's smart enough to know that when you've sliced things up, typically you will put those into a mute group and you can do that inside a track edit. Now you can be very specific with your mute groups, which we'll again, we'll look at in another episode. But for now, it uses a global system where it's just made all of the pads monophonic, which is like putting everything into one mute group. If you don't understand that now, throughout the course of the tutorial series, that will make more sense. But just leave it at the default. And if you want to, you can pitch on a global level. Be pitching all of your sample chops. Get started and have some fun. I'll see you guys in the next one.